Hello, boys and girls. It's spring. Let's go play some baseball. Yeah, that's right. Spring is always a big time to go and play baseball. Unfortunately, right now, there's not a lot of baseball being played. So I miss being able to watch some baseball. When I was younger, your age, I played baseball. I wasn't the best player, but it doesn't mean I didn't learn a lot from participating. First, sometimes things can look a little scary, or we may not be good at them, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't try them. That's one of the first lessons I learned about baseball. The second was about the importance of paying attention. I had to watch for that ball coming for me. I also had to learn a lot of patience waiting for the ball to come to me. I wanted to be on every base and do every play, but you can't. That's why you had to also learn a lot about teamwork. You had to trust one another that they knew what to do because it's not just the pitcher and the catcher. It's a lot of infielders and a lot of outfielders. So teamwork was something else I learned. I also learned another lesson. It was about opportunity. What? You don't understand what opportunity has to do with baseball? Well, let me share a story with you. The story is Casey at the Bat, a wonderful poem that was written back in 1888 and published in a newspaper. There's been a lot of great stories printed in newspapers back in the day. This is another one of those. And it showed me the importance of opportunity. And I'm going to share it with you today because, honestly, I'm missing a little baseball. Casey at the Mat. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, this book is looks like a newspaper. Yeah, back in 1888, they may have been dark and like this, big, bold letters. So, in here, a lot of the pictures that we're going to see would be what they might look like back in 1888. The outlaw wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood 4-2 to two with but one inning left to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of that game. That means the Mudville Nine was losing, and they had two outs in the last inning. The outlook was not good about them winning that game. A straggling few got up to go into deep despair. The rest clung to that hope which springs internal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could get a whack at that. We'd even put up more money now with Casey at the bat. Some of the people were already getting up to leave. And we've seen that before. They thought, well, the game's over. Let's just leave. But they just thought... If our mighty Casey could get up, he might could, he might could win this game for all of us. We would wager on that. But Flynn preceded Casey, as also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu, and the later was a Cake. That means both of them weren't that good, and both of them had to get up hit, get on base, so Casey could come up. Well, let's see what happens. So upon the stricken multitude, grim, melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to bat. They just didn't believe that it was possible. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off that ball. 
They both got on base. They both had hits. It's just wonderful. But you know what that's going to mean. And when the dust had lifted and the men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn hugging third. <gasps> then from 5,000 throats and more, there rose a lusty yell. In the rumble through the valley, it rattled in the dell. It knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat, for Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was an ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile upon Casey's face. <laughs> Casey was a very proud player. He knew he was great. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt. Twas Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then while the riding picture ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye. A sneer curled on Casey's lip. <laughs> And now the leather-colored spear came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it hanging grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded speed. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. Casey just let the ball go on by. He didn't even try to hit it. What? Oh, but Casey's not worried. He knows he can hit any ball. He's just letting them, that one to go by. Just wasn't his style. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on the stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted one in the stands, and it's likely they'd had killed him had it not be Casey raising his hand. Casey said, was saying to the, to the audience, it's okay, I meant to do that, and it's not the umpire's fault. I let that ball go by. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tournament. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the picture, and once more the spheroid flew, but Casey still ignored it. And the umpire said, strike two! Casey just let the second ball go by. Two strikes, no balls. What is Casey doing? Oh, but Casey, mighty Casey, the best of them all. He knew what he was doing. Fraud! cried the Maddening thousands and echoed answered fraud, but on one scornful look from Casey and the audience was in awe. <laughs> they saw his face grew stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain and they knew that Casey wouldn't let the ball go by again. Casey was The sneer is gone from Casey's lip, his teeth clenched in hate. 
he pounded with cruel violence the bat upon the plate. Casey's ready now. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go, and now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, wow, he swung at this ball, boys and girls. What do you think happened? Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere and somewhere hearts are light, and somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Our story didn't end on a happy note like many of our stories do. Did it? No. I told you this story taught me a lot about opportunities. In baseball, we get it, at least three opportunities. Casey let two of those opportunities to go by. He didn't try. He didn't try to hit the ball. He just let them go by. And they caused him something. So when the third time came up, he knew it may be his very last chance. He swung at it and missed. And his entire team lost. He waited till the very end. So the moral of the story is when you're given opportunities, take advantage of every opportunity you have. Don't let them pass by. Don't say, oh, I can do it later. Or, it's not important right now. I'll get back to it. Because we never know if those opportunities are going to be around. Much like your schoolwork right now. You've been given opportunities, so let's get it done. Don't just put it off till tomorrow, and then tomorrow, and then tomorrow. Because one day we're going to be back in school. And all that work will need to be handed in. And you don't want to be struggling trying to get it all made up at the last minute. Like Casey. Because what happened to Casey? He, he lost. He thought he could do it. He was a great player. But even great players make mistakes. And not everything goes their way. So, boys and girls, hopefully today is going to be a beautiful day. So we can go out and play. Maybe we can pick up a baseball bat and a glove and a ball, a spheroid, and play a little ball. Well, here's to you. We'll see you later. Bye.